Ninety years ago, the Virginia Farm Bureau made our local farmers a promise to protect and preserve a way of life they work so hard to establish. Today, our insurance agents work to protect all Virginians, not just farmers. We want to keep Virginia, Virginia. More information is at FarmBureauAdvantage.com. The Remarkable Soybean. From its oil, we get products like ink, candles, and paint. From its meal, we get a high-protein fiber used in foods and animal feeds. Natural soy is replacing chemicals and products you use every day. You can learn more about soybeans at VASoybean.com. Agricultural education has come a long way in recent years, and there's a new course of instruction in Virginia that hopes to enhance farm management opportunities for young people, as well as to demonstrate improved production technology. It's being offered for the first time ever by Mass and Nutton Technology Center, and we'll tell you all about it during Ag Insights. We also have a report this week about our new Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry in Virginia. Plus, we'll have a segment on starting your 2018 vegetable garden with transplants. Those stories and more on this episode of Virginia Farming. I'm Amy Rocher. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam has selected Bettina Ring to serve as Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry during his administration. Ring previously served as Senior Vice President of Family Forests for the American Forest Foundation. She was also responsible for overseeing the American Tree Farm System, the largest and oldest sustainable woodland program in the nation. She holds a bachelor's degree in forestry and wildlife from Virginia Tech and a master's degree in business administration from James Madison University. Well, there are some interesting things taking place in agricultural education these days. This week, we take a look at students learning about our industry with a unique setting for a classroom, getting hands-on experience. It's coming up next during Ag Insights. When you think of agricultural education, you probably think of FFA or perhaps shop class at your local middle school or high school. But there's a concerted effort in Virginia to introduce management techniques to young people interested in a career in agriculture. A new course of instruction has been introduced by leadership at the Massanutten Technical Center in Harrisonburg. It's called Ag Production Technology and is focused on numerous sectors in agriculture, including animal science, plant science, soil science, as well as farm business management. The new program of education started in 2017 and uses an actual working farm as a classroom. Kevin Hutton is director of Massanutten Technical Center. The school has been recognized on numerous occasions for innovation and educational effectiveness. He explains the core concept of this new agricultural education program based in Virginia's Shenandoah Valley. So our agricultural production technology class is a chance to offer students in Rockingham County and Harrisonburg City the chance to learn about agricultural science. Uh, we're in the top 4% in the East Coast and we really want to provide them the opportunity to learn about soil management, sustainable farming, livestock production, soil, uh, raising crops and raising uh, different types of products to keep the valley up and running. Officials say that's what it's all about not only creating career opportunities for these young students to become farm managers and farm business professionals, but also to sustain the future of Virginia agriculture. Elected officials in Harrisonburg and Rockingham County have been supportive of this new agriculture production technology course. Pablo Cuevas is on the Rockingham County Board of Supervisors and provides some insight into why this vocational program is important to young people and to agriculture. Because we have so many kids, so many young folks, that they don't want to just be teachers or, or maybe even doctors or whatever the case may be. They want to be, they want to work with their hands. They want to be mechanics. They want to be plumbers. They want to be welders. They want to work in a body shop. They like automobiles and those kind of things. And many of them just like this in here and in Rockingham County. Uh, I know the age of our farm owners is getting to a point that is getting so important for our young people to know and understand 
farming and agriculture and the way that you know that you can make a living so that this program in here is going to be just one more asset for us to offer these kids you know uh, uh, in their future and not just uh, how to grow something is the financial part of it you know and the many other you know uh, contacts that you have as a, as a farmer that you have to have in order to you know but to make a living and to be able to pass that farm on to the rest of the family later on. The teacher selected for this first ever course of instruction at Massanutten Technical Center is Mr. Eric Stogdale. He came to the program with more than two decades of experience in agricultural education and says he has a keen desire to be a, a part of something new in agricultural education. I was asked to uh, interview for this job back in uh, February. I talked to a couple people on the committee and the CT director, Eric Fitzgerald, and it just sounded like a really neat opportunity, not only to be able to teach children like I have the last 24 years, but to do so with a land laboratory of this size and scale. I mean, we have 180 acres here. We have another 12, 15 acres and a couple of barns on another spot. And to be able to get the students out and do the hands-on education just seemed like such a unique and different opportunity compared to any other ag program in the state. It was just something I was drawn to. I was born and raised on a small farm uh, just up the road a little bit, and agriculture has always been a passion of mine. Teaching agriculture is something I've done for a long time, and it just seemed like a really good fit. Uh, one of the first projects we did uh, here on the farm, uh, Mike and I had gotten together and decided to plant some pumpkins out here on about a half acre field and we brought the students out and the problem was some of the pumpkin uh, plants were starting to turn yellow a little too early. So we did some research and the kids found out it was either a fungus or the uh, squash bugs and then we started talking to some experts and found out that we could spray but at that time it probably wouldn't make a lot of sense to spray. So that just initial problem solving, I think that's what a lot of kids need to know if they're going into this field in agriculture. According to Stogdale, the ultimate goal of this ag production technology course at Massanutten Technical Center is this. Primarily what we're trying to do here is train kids to be farm managers, not just laborers, not just somebody come out and do the work, but kids that can actually think and plan and budget and know how to create a profit from the operations that they're doing to create sustainable farms that will be around for generations to come. Response from the students has been positive in this first ever class. I think a lot of the things I can learn here are more management things that my dad does and I'm not really, it's not really a hands-on thing that I'm involved in on our farm. So I think I learned a lot of the management and financial side of things. And then also I could learn more about the lamb, hog, and goat side of things because all we have is cattle. Cron says this program has opened his eyes to all of the opportunities in Virginia agriculture. Yeah, I say our farm does a lot of the rotational grazing and rotational crops and that, that side of things and the livestock side of things. But we've never really got into the pumpkins and vegetables and things like that that we're selling to the just selling off the farm like that we've never really got into anything like that so this is a really new deal for me selling pumpkins and the sunflowers and that's just a really new thing I'm learning a lot about it. Cron says if he were talking with other students about this new program? I would tell them I think it's gonna be a really good opportunity for them to learn a whole lot in the future now that we're just getting started it's a lot of building things and buying animals and just the startup things. But once it gets started, I think it's going to be a really good opportunity to learn a whole lot about production, agriculture, and how to manage a farm. And even if you don't want to be a farm manager, you can learn about what it's about to be a farmer, and then you can work in the agricultural industry, and you'll know what it's actually like to be on a production farm. One young lady is a senior in high school and had this to say about the new program. Well, last year I was in a class called um, Biological Applications in Agriculture at my own school. And as we were signing up for classes for the next year, I kind of noticed that there was this class that not pretty much no one else kind of noticed it, but I kind of took a notice in it and it was the ag class here. And it immediately struck my interest because none of the other classes that my school offers are really animal-based and that's really my 
side of agriculture that I really love is the animal side of things. And so um, I definitely was interested because of that I saw that it would just be so many different things and that it would be, um, it was called, I think, farm production. And so I was like, well, this will help me be more profitable at my own farm. So I definitely wasn't expecting to come out here the first day that we came to the farm and look at pumpkins and try to dis decide what uh, um, they had. And so um, that was interesting. Um, another thing, um, the more like building side of agriculture is not really my favorite, but I've definitely started to enjoy it with this class. Like, I don't know if it's because it's outside of the workshop or what not, but it's, it's a lot of fun. So for livestock, I can kind of just be like, oh, hey, I know that already. But for all these things, it's like just learning new things every single day. Like I, d I didn't know pumpkins could have diseases, but I do now. Um, and so learning the different soil types that we have been, that's not something I've really ever learned either. So it's just the um, process of learning new things that maybe aren't in my interest area, but I still get to do what I like, but I also get to learn other things at the same time. Yet another student in this class is homeschooled and says he's participating in this educational program to learn more about opportunities in agriculture. I've always had an interest in the outdoors and in uh, agriculture and uh, I was uh, excited to hear when uh, Mass Nutton Technical Center came up with a new agriculture class and it's something I've been interested in, something that I know I've always wanted to do, especially coming from a background where I come from, where big time construction. And so it's kind of a big leap for me, but I've always uh, thought, of, thought of agriculture as like my passion. So what would this young man like to do in the future? I'm hoping it takes me to a point where I can uh, start my own farm, uh, hoping at some point in the future do uh, wildlife management and even start a deer farm because uh, no there's not a lot of those around here and I think it would be interesting to start a whitetail deer farm or potentially whitetail and mule deer farm in the Shenandoah Valley. Odom says he has learned a lot of things he, he never really thought about before. I uh, actually learned uh, to be honest about uh, species and uh, uh, different types of species of uh, let's say uh, cows uh, all the different species like I never even knew about like I had no idea that there are so many different species and variations of these animals when it comes to uh, cows pigs and goats and to where you can change all the genetics and change their color change whether they're polled or non-polled and get to where they're uh, you can change them to become uh, uh, a heavier animal or a lighter animal change them to where they could be better uh, toward, out towards the west or here on the eastern side is just that's something that really jumped out to me. What would Odom tell other teenagers about this new ag production technology course? I would tell them that uh, it's something they should learn stuff about uh, the outdoors learning management and stuff learning where our food comes from learning how it uh, all comes together and helps uh, support the, our nation and tell them that uh, it helps them to get a good feel of work what work should be. Mike Phillips is the owner of the farm being used as a hands-on ag classroom. He shares one aspect of what students are discovering about field crops. What the students are going to learn is the basics of crop rotation. There's a quick rotation on the, the field behind us. That field will always be in corn. It will be in corn in odd years, except in this, like this is 2017. Next year, the field behind us will be in corn. And what the rotation is, is you're not only getting feed for the livestock, but you're feeding the soil. You're feeding, you know, the bee, the habitat, I mean, like the pollinators or whatnot through buckwheat planting. And then we're doing a quick rotation back and forth. So you have a quick rotation, but you're building the soil quality because if the, what you're seeing behind us right now will not be harvested. That's the feed, the feed for the ground, feed for the insects, I mean, the, the microorganisms in the ground, the earthworms and so forth. So you got two types of livestock to feed. The ones above ground, 
our livestock that we make money from, and below ground, which helps that process make us that money, if that makes sense. Phillips and Stogdale spent one fall morning helping students to understand the concept of rotational grazing with cattle. Uh, the practice has been used for decades, but it's been refined in recent years, allowing farmers more control over where the cattle feed and how much they eat. Uh, the goal is to keep the animals on a patch of ground only long enough for them to eat the lush top growth of grass and not overgraze the pasture. When cattle are left on a field for too long, they can damage the forage by overgrazing the pasture, uh, consuming the entire leaf of the grass plant. This stunts the grass because there's no leaf area to absorb solar energy and, and feed the plant. The students learned that modern rotational grazing practices incorporate the use of electrified polywire, which is easily moved. It's rather obvious, even to the casual observer, that the cattle and the pasture are beneficiaries of rotational grazing management techniques. Ultimately, this new course of instruction at Massanutten Technical Center is all about hands-on experience and offering high school students an outdoor classroom to learn modern agricultural practices. The big, in the big picture, it is to be able to allow the students to understand soil biology, it's the, it's soil chemistry, plant science, and animal science, and how everything is tied together where you can cut your input costs down, still keep the soil being productive and keep increasingly getting better. And you can cut your bottom line because you can have your feed stock right here. You don't have to have so much input costs coming in. So they can learn all sorts of, they can find a passion for themselves. Right. That's why the kids are here. They're, that I, that's the biggest enjoyment that I've had for a long time because you're allowing the opportunity you're given an opportunity, let them find something they'd like to do and have a passion for. But you just gotta have a play. Every kid needs a sandbox. This is our sandbox. Let them play. More information about this rather unique agricultural production technology program can be found at the website mtcva.com. Just click on the high school programs and then ag production technology. School officials and Harrisonburg and, and Rockingham County are to be commended for creating this forward-thinking, hands-on course of instruction for young people interested in Virginia agriculture. We'll be back in just a moment. It might be winter time now, but vegetable growers are already planning for the 2018 growing season. Chris Mullins tells us all about it from the ground up. Hi and welcome. Today we're at Aaron's Creek Farms uh, near Clarksville, Virginia, and we're at a large greenhouse operation. And what we want to talk a little bit about today or show you is how maybe some of your transplants are made in the springtime as you go to the garden center and buy your vegetable transplants. They might have originated at a place just like this. And we're so happy to be here today. We've got Eric Gordon and Greg Gordon, and they've, they're hosting us, and we're so glad to be here. Uh, Greg, this is a family-run operation. How long have you been in business? Since uh, 1964, our dad started it right out of college. So you do things, I know, I know you uh, grow plugs and transplants. What are some of the other things that you, uh, that you grow? Uh, perennials and annuals, as well as uh, commercial transplants for farmers as well as homeowners. I know also you've got kind of a unique business. I know, Eric, you're involved with, uh, you sell hobby greenhouses and parts and pieces for greenhouses for people that want to buy those? Right, we sell direct to the end customer um, for backyard use um, and some light commercial. We have a lot of people that are trying to get into some of that. I know we've done segments before on hobby greenhouses and how nice they are for the home gardener to be able to have a place where they can propagate things, where they can grow things throughout the wintertime even. Sure, sure. We found over the last several years that um, that market has really expanded and there's some real nice structures out there now for them to choose from. That's great. But one of the things I really want to see is how you start seeds and how you um, make these plugs, these transplants for people. So let's go see, let's go see that now. All right, Greg, uh, we're here at the beginning, or I guess this is the beginning. How do you get started every year? Chris, this is our seed room, and our, our orders come to us from our customers, and they 
try to determine their orders based on what they think the homeowners are going to want to plant in their gardens for this coming season. Once the customers send us their orders, our computer system compiles them, and then they're sent to our seed room here where we actually will uh, put the seed in the trays and start the process. Well, I see lots of seeds in this room. I also see these flats that are filled with soilless media. So you take the seeds and get them into these flats, obviously, somehow. Mm -hmm. And I see you've got some equipment here to do that. We do. We have a vacuum seeder here that once this tray is fed in, it dibbles it and it sows uh, row per cell or seed per cell and then covers it when it goes out the end. That's pretty nice. A pretty automated system. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it goes out to the greenhouse. Is that right? It does. And that's where we start our germination process. And then we will grow them until they're ready to be transplanted. Alright Greg, we've got a nice, nice flat of tomatoes here. You know, we seeded them down in the greenhouse and they've grown up. Uh, but you know, this is not something that the most home gardeners are to buy at the garden center for their transplants. Uh, what do we what do you do from to get them from this point to a maybe a cell pack that might have 36 or 48 small plants in it? Okay. Chris, we uh, we actually will take this tray and uh, which has 512 plugs in it. And what we're going to do is use our robotic transplanter here to uh, step them up and space them into the bedding flat trays, which is what the homeowner will see when they buy them in the garden centers. Let's see this thing operate, Dennis. That's pretty cool. All right. Chris, what we have here are 32 fingers that are going down into this plug tray, picking up an individual plant and then going back and spacing them out and planting them in the bedding flat trays like you would see uh, or purchase in the garden centers. The empty tray, once it's finished, will process all the way through. It'll empty it and then it will go on. Now it's on the fourth row of planting, so now that it advances those trays because it's finished uh, the transplanting process for those and brings in the new set of flats so that we can continue uh, moving them from the plug tray to the bedding flats. All right, Greg, this was a transplant out there. I noticed you've added some tags to this. And you know, a lot of the times consumers see this and on the back, it tells a lot of cultural information. So it's important for them to look at that? That's correct. If you haven't grown the product before or if it's something new for you, it should be some guidelines on there that will, will really help you get a good start. All right, so it, it's now it goes in the greenhouse here. You've got the right light, the right temperature, humidity, everything's right, and it grows just like those right there. Mm -hmm. These are probably three to four weeks older than the crop that we just transplanted and they will either go to a commercial grower who will grow them for you or they will uh, grow, be grown for the homeowner and then you can produce them yourself. Well this has been great. Uh, thank you so much for letting us come out here and see the what you do here in this, uh, this greenhouse and how that these transplants are, are made for the consumer. Thank you for coming. Well, for more information about transplant production or what to do with your transplants uh, in the garden, contact your local county extension office. For From the Ground Up, I'm Chris Mullins, and we'll see you next time. Our pearl of wisdom this week comes from an anonymous viewer who says, don't be afraid to go out on a limb. That's generally where the fruit is. That does it for our show this week. Have a great week, everyone. I'm Amy Rocher for Virginia Farming. And now for your Ag Trivia Question of the Week. Which of the following vegetable crops has the highest overall value to Virginia farmers? The answer when we return.
Ninety years ago, the Virginia Farm Bureau made our local farmers a promise to protect and preserve a way of life they work so hard to establish. We want to keep Virginia, Virginia. Anyone can be a Farm Bureau member, and there's a local Farm Bureau in every county. More information is at vafarmbureau.org. Virginia soybean farmers are hard at work growing soybeans to produce products you use every day. Candles, soaps, even crayons can be made from soybeans. Remember, when you buy soy, you're helping to support American jobs, the economy, and our nation's energy security. The answer to this week's trivia question is A, tomatoes.